Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. A blessed Thanksgiving to all of you uh, today. Uh, nothing new here uh, today. We're, we're gathered together to, to thank the Lord, to sing his praises. Service is printed out for you in your service folder. Uh, we're going to begin, actually, this morning with the handbill. You may remain seated. We'll begin our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I will not die, but live. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We join in verses 1 and 2 of hymn 609.
Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord, Lord God, truly you are good in all that you do. Accept our heartfelt thanks for the many blessings we receive from your gracious hand. You have revealed yourself to us as our refuge and strength. May a spirit of thankfulness always live in us. To you be praise now and forever. I'd like to direct your attention now to our scripture lesson for today, Genesis chapter 8, one of our lessons, uh, beginning at the 18th verse. One of the very first things Noah does when he comes out of the ark, uh, having experienced the deliverance of the Lord and his grace, he worships the Lord. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Our psalm today, Psalm 107, which we'll read responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And his wonderful deeds for them. For he satisfies the thirsty. And fills the hungry with good things. The upright see and rejoice. (laughs) But all the wicked shut their mouths. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things. Continue now with a choir.
Our next scripture lesson today is taken from James chapter 1, just a couple of verses, verses 16 through 18. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Our hymn response is verses 1 and 4 of hymn 611. stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel lesson today taken from the 19th chapter of Luke's gospel beginning at the first verse. 
Uh, who knows how many people Zacchaeus gouged and cheated as a tax collector, uh, but here he, he meets the Lord Jesus through that gospel. He responds uh, to the grace and love of the Lord Jesus, his forgiveness, and says, look, I'll pay it all back. Uh, that's, you know, what our response should be. You know, what can we do, Lord, to serve you out of gratitude? Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. You may be seated, we'll continue with hymn 597. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God that we are going to consider today is recorded for us in Ephesians chapter 1. There we read, This is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. In the name of our triune God, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. That's just a great hymn. You, you have to sing it on Thanksgiving, don't you? The, the words to that hymn, if you were paying attention, and I'm sure you were, are just wonderful Thanksgiving words. The song in and of itself is worth singing. If you know the backstory, it's even a better hymn. Apologies if you've heard this before. But the pastor who wrote that hymn was a Lutheran pastor in the 1600s by the name of Martin Rinkert. He lived in the city of Eilenburg, Germany during the Thirty Years' War. The Thirty Years' War was as difficult a time to live in as you can imagine 30 years of war would be. When Pastor Rinkert was in Eilenburg, three times armies were passing by Eilenburg stopped and demanded tribute from the citizens of Eilenburg. The citizens would send out Pastor Rinkert to try and negotiate, to get the tribute down. The plague came through Eilenburg while he lived there. 8,000 people died in one year while he, was the, while he was living in this town, including his own wife. He was the last pastor in the town, the only surviving pastor reported that at times he was doing 50 funerals a day during the, the plague. Personally, I don't think I can comprehend what his life was like. My life has been a cakewalk compared to what this man endured. But it's Pastor Rinkert who wrote the hymn, not me. He's the one who writes, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. After all that he had been through, he writes this hymn. Too often, I fear and confess, our thanksgiving focuses on the stuff we have, the, the material possessions that we have, maybe the bad stuff we don't have, but it focuses more or less on the things, the things that we own, the things that we can have. Now, that's not wrong. We should be thankful for that, right? In our first lesson, Noah and his family come off the ark and God's promise is, I'm going to make sure this world keeps working and you keep having things. So we should be thankful for those things. We, we truly should. This is a gift of God that we have the, the possessions that we do. It is a gift of God that we have the people in our lives that we have in our lives who are wonderful blessings from God. But if that's the cap... If that's all the higher our thanksgiving goes, I don't think we've seen the whole picture. I don't think we've, we've seen what, what Pastor Rinkert saw about the blessings that we have from our God. As Paul writes in our text to these Christians in Ephesus, his thanksgiving was not about things. His thanksgiving was for things that couldn't be seen. In 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Paul in our text from Ephesians shows us what he means by that. He fixes his eyes on what is unseen. His thanks that he offers was for the faith that was in these Christians in Ephesus. His, his thanks was for the love that they were expressing for one another. You can't put that in the closet. You can't add that up on a spreadsheet. Paul was thankful for the unseen blessings that these Christians had, the faith and the love that lived in them. What do you think would happen if today I could guarantee that God was going to appear here today. Politely ask Pastor Wentner, step aside. I'll take the rest of the sermon. We couldn't build a big enough building for that, could we? If we could announce to the community, Jesus is going to show up, preach the sermon. You couldn't build a building. You don't, nobody owns enough folding chairs. We're, we're not packing all the people in, are we? But that, that's actually what happens. 
That's what happens when we gather for worship, isn't it? The Lord Jesus comes to us. He speaks to us in his word. He tells us his will. He tells us his ways. He tells us what he's like. He, he pulls back the veil and shows us a God who's not an angry lawgiver, who's disgusted with us, angry with us, but shows us a gracious God who forgives our sins. Jesus comes to us in his word. Jesus comes to us in the sacrament of baptism. He made a covenant with you in that water. Might have been a long time ago. You might not even remember when it happened. But it doesn't change anything about the covenant he made. He made a covenant with you that you were his own and he would, he would never leave you. Jesus comes to us when we take the Lord's Supper. His body, his blood, for the forgiveness of your sins. God does come to us. He is not a distant God, far off in heaven, watching, seeing what happens. But he is intimately connected to you, part of your life. In our text, Paul talks about your faith in the Lord Jesus. Through faith in Jesus, you are connected to that Savior. He is in your life. Your status in life is your greatest reason to be thankful. God has claimed you as his own. A couple chapters later in Ephesians, Paul would write, in him, that is in Jesus, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Right now, you are perfectly prepared because of what the Lord Jesus has done for you to approach your God with freedom and confidence. All your sins, the very real sins that you have committed, the rebellion and the, the selfishness and the godlessness, all those sins have been completely washed away in the blood of Jesus. And I, I, I know you've heard that numerous times, countless times in your life. Jesus died for your sins. But it's not just something a pastor has to say when he gets to about the middle of his sermon and now I have to tell you, Jesus died for your sins. That's the greatest message. That's the life-changing message that you are set free from sin and you can stand before God with confidence and freedom because you are truly God's child. His blood has washed away all of your sins. He has saved you and made you into his own child. You can go to him in prayer and he will listen. He's eager to listen. He wants to hear. He's eager to help. And he sets you free from, from the guilt of your sin. You don't have to muddle through life with the past constantly haunting you. But you can live in the freedom of God's love and the opportunities that he has set before you today to serve him and to use the gifts that he's given to you? Can't quite hold that, can you? Can't grab that message of forgiveness and put it in a drawer at home or in the closet. And, but it's real. It's the message that God loves you. I give thanks for that about you, Paul says in our text. God, God has redeemed you. You have no greater reason to be thankful than to think about what the Lord Jesus has done. Sure, be thankful for the things. That you should. We, should. we really should. But look at the things you can't see. The spiritual blessings you have because Jesus is with you. In Proverbs, we read a verse, it's uh, chapter 14. When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down. But even in death, the righteous have a refuge. The disaster, whatever the disaster may be that falls on an unbeliever, takes away everything. But there's nothing that can take away your greatest treasure. Not even death, Solomon says. Not even death can take away the treasures that live in you because you are connected to Jesus Christ. You belong to him. This is our reason to be thankful for these things we can't see, but things that are real. The world may measure life by what they are able to purchase or own or collect. That's not how God measures life. God measures life. God says your life is important and meaningful because 
of what Jesus Christ has done for you and the faith that lives in you and the eternal promises that you have because of that faith, because of that Savior. And then Paul tells us what that faith does. One of the ways it expresses itself is he talks about your your love for all the saints. Again, that's not something we can hold, can we? But it's real. It's quite frankly why, why God has established congregations. He brings us together so that we can express the Christian love that's in us. We can reflect the love of Christ to other people. And it's God's intention, he states it throughout the scriptures, that we should live in love and peace with one another in our congregation. We may not always agree on everything, but that's not going to change how we treat one another because, because we all belong to Jesus. Without him, well, we may never have met each other. Wouldn't know one another at all, but because of him, we're going to know each other forever, for eternity. And so he wants us to put that love into practice even now. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven, but already now we can serve and we can love. One of the ways we do that, it's on your bulletin cover and on the back of your bulletin cover. We do it for people we don't even know. Bulletin cover is about the, our church body's uh, ministry of uh, care and compassion. I might not remember it exactly, but the, the money that we're able to give that goes, it helps people who are dealing with disasters, troubles in life. We don't even know who those people are who got that money. But the people in our church body gave over a million dollars to that. That's Christian love. Helping people you don't even know. That's why our our congregation willingly gives money to our synod to support the mission work that's done overseas, mission work that's done here in our country, support the work that's done in training pastors and teachers. That's Christian love. We're giving stuff away to people we don't even know, to places we may never ever go to. But we know what's going to happen there. People are going to hear about Jesus. And we're going to get to meet them when we get to heaven. That'll be fantastic. That Christian love that lived in these Christians in Ephesus, Paul gave thanks for it. That we would be a congregation that expresses Christian love in whatever ways we find it, find to do it. It would be a wonderful expression of our thankfulness to God that we would be united together in our common faith and eager, eager to serve one another. Can't hold that. Can't buy it on Black Friday, but it's real. Pastor Rinkert saw the unseen. He realized that his reason to be thankful was not the circumstances in which he found himself, quite frankly, if he based his thankfulness on his circumstances, he would have probably just been a bitter man. The life he lived was beyond challenging. But he saw the unseen, and so he wrote, Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. He rejoiced as he thought about what his God had done for him, how his God had saved him, in spite of the horrible circumstances that he found himself in. God grant you the faith, the thankfulness to see the blessings you have in your life, the things you have, the people you have, and be thankful for those, yes. God grant you the faith to see the things you can't hold and you you can't see with your eyes. The treasures that are yours, very real. The treasures of God's love and presence in your life. And God grant you the faith to see that and to be thankful to be thankful today and always because you live in peace and confidence, the peace and the confidence of knowing that you are God's child through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue by singing hymn number 626.
Let us rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you today, especially for all the spiritual gifts that you give to us, forgiveness, life, salvation, the love that we share with one another, the heaven that you prepared for us. Be with us as your church, as we live and grow in the Lord Jesus. And Lord, use these offerings, these gifts, these tithes that we present to you today for good in your kingdom. Use these offerings to draw more and more people close to you by faith. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with the prayer of thanks, responsive prayer, pages 5 and 6. Lord of heaven and earth, you made all things beautiful. You've provided green forests and refreshing streams. You've arranged the orderly procession of day and night for our work and rest. Thank you for the Thank you for roofs that shelter us, for clothing that protects us, and for food and drink. Thank you for our work, for projects that are done well, and for the approval of supervisors and teachers. Thank you for all who serve at night and make our days more pleasant. Thank you for our associates at work, for their encouragement and grace, and for the joys of human friendships. Thank you for our cities and our countrysides, for farms and factories, for streets and highways, and for all of life that flows so swiftly before us. Thank you for children at play, their boundless energy, and their shouts of joy and laughter. Thank you for the morning greetings we receive, and for all the smiles that come from faces loved by you. Thank you for Christian parents, for their affection and their care. Hear us, Lord, as we give thanks for personal blessings. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for his coming to us in word and sacraments, for his giving and forgiving, and for listening to our prayers. Receive our gifts and offerings as our sacrifice of praise. Lead us in thankful living today and always. Amen. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. We'll close today with hymn 507.
Once again, good morning to everybody. Blessed Thanksgiving to you. Safe journeys to all of you who are traveling today. May the Lord keep you safe. Uh, special thanks uh, to Pastor Wentner for his fine sermon today. Choirs, uh, everyone who is accompanying and, and soloing and all that stuff. Great job. Thank you very much. Just one announcement. Midweek Advent's coming up. Uh, next Sunday is beginning of Advent. Uh, November 30th is the first midweek Advent service. Um, encourage you to attend those. There's a sign-up sheet. You, you, you out the church to the left uh, if you're planning on attending, especially the meal over at uh, Good Shepherd's campus. Uh, please sign your name there. Uh, and uh, the theme this year, good news for difficult times. Lord's blessings. Again, blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you. 